All right, let's uh, change pace now and, and go to the other, what I felt like was kind of the biggest game of the weekend, and that was Miami visiting Texas A&M. Folks, I told you last week we felt like Texas A&M was in a must-win situation because of what they've got coming up on their schedule. Remember, they've got to face Arkansas in AT&T Stadium in Jerry's World. They've got Mississippi State. They've got Alabama. They could not lose to App State, then Miami, and go through that gauntlet. They were staring two and four right in the face. Okay, they're still staring, by the way, three and three. They got to win one of those next three just to be three and three. So they're not out of the woods, but they were in a real predicament because of the way that they had played early this year. Let's just get a get a, a frame of reference here. Texas A and M wins the game, but this is what Jimbo had to say afterward. Listen, we're not we're nowhere close to being perfect, but I'm very proud of this team. Got better and played a really good football team and won. Now we got to get better and keep going. You know what this game felt like? And I think you get the sense just listening to him right there. I mean he's Hey, you know, they're really good, and, you know, we got out of here with a win. I'm really proud. He wanted no part of that press conference. Do you know why? Mario Cristobal wanted no part of his. Do you know why? Because these are two programs that have expectations and hopes that are just too soon. It's just too soon for them. We, We all even want this too soon for them. There's... These programs, we all want Miami to be back, and and we want Texas A&M to live up to the expectations of where they've recruited and invested in their program, but they're just not there. We we all want something that that is just not there yet. Guess what? Miami and Texas A&M, you're just like a 14 or 15-year-old that like desperately wants their license. And it's like, great, but you're not 16 yet. You're just not quite there. Neither of them are. Even A&M in a win. And you can gripe all you want, Aggie fans. It's like, oh, Clatt's always hard on us. We won the game. Yes, you won the game. You were also outgained by 128 yards. You didn't even gain 300 yards total on the day. That means against App State, you couldn't get to 200 yards total. Against Miami, you couldn't get to 300 yards total. And you have a head coach that was paid over $70 million and given a 10-year contract because he called the plays for a national championship team. So that's a problem. Offensively, A&M is broken to some degree. They don't have the the requisite quarterback play to go out there and really play great on that side of the ball. They're not quite there yet. Okay, they win, but it it took a lot for them to win. Namely, Miami struggling to execute. And I guess you could expect this from a team that has a coach in his first year there but i just felt like they would execute better they were in the red zone three times came away with three points they had that muff point that led to to a score for a and m they just didn't play well again they outgained a and m by 128 yards they had 27 first downs and didn't score a touchdown <laughs> i mean like miami should have won the game so yeah a and m wins How confident can you be moving forward? Not very. Not with the schedule they have in front of them. And Miami, not quite there. Yeah, you played pretty well. Not quite there. Too many mistakes. One of the knocks on Mario Cristobal at Oregon was game management. Those crept up. Those crept up again. Red zone issues, special teams issues. This A&M team, this Miami team, Not quite legal to drive yet. That's the truth. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here. College football on Fox.